Greetings everyone, Marquee TV. Super excited. Today I have a great guest and uh, I hope you'll learn a little bit from him. It's Douglas Marjorie. I met Doug a long time ago. Yep. Uh, Doug uh, owned the Wine Cask in Santa Barbara, plus he owned the Wine Cask restaurant in Santa Barbara. Uh, he was uh, also good friends with Jim Clendenin from Obal and Clima, who passed away uh, last year. And of course, Bob Lindquist from Hupe whom I'm a big fan, John Alban and Brian Talley and all those guys. And I've been, you know, you know, I've been a big fan of um, wines from Santa Barbara for a long time. And Doug started making wines about uh, 25 years ago. Or... Well, I started making wines with Jim and Bob, yeah, way, oh, yeah. way back when, in 19, 1986. Yeah, that's when I started. But I started, I started uh, my own brand in 2001. Okay, so uh, these are delicious wines. We had a little luncheon yesterday. We're doing a tasting in the store today. We've got 50 people coming. But I wanted, for those of you who can't come to the tasting, I want to go over these. These are cool climate wines, region or zone one. They go up to five, I think, in California. And let's quickly go through them so sure. clients understand what these wines are like. And I think I'm going to put the odd man out first. Okay. Uh, because this is the Sauvignon Blanc. Great. Uh, and it's called Sybarite. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's the odd man out because Marjor was primarily a Rhone uh, varietal, Rhone style varietal producer. Uh, and, and, but we also make Sauvignon Blanc. Right. right. Just because I love Sauvignon Blanc. And it goes great with food. It goes great with the kind of food we have in Santa Barbara. And I had access to some really incredible vineyards right off the bat. And uh, uh, this is a this is from an ABA called Happy Canyon yep. Santa Barbara. And I think wine aficionados, kind of Cinti, all pretty much concede that it might be the best place to grow Sauvignon Blanc in California. It's it's more sans serre like. It's poor nutrient soil. It's exactly. Iron, iron. There's iron, iron. serpentine, mm -hmm. granite. It's like the Italian flag. It's uh, the cause serpentine's green. Yeah. Uh, iron's red. Yeah. Granite's white. And it's uh, that that leads to low nutrient soils, leads to reductive flavors in wines, which leads to savoriness. Right. And so this wine, when you when you swirl and you and you taste it, you salivate. And you want to eat That's something. That's what I love about Sancerre, the Loire here. Valley, and this is what this wine has. Let's talk about the name for a second, Sybarite, which so, is cool, which I learned. Yeah. Fabulous name. It's, it's hard to pronounce, and uh, but it's a it's a great word. It's a very self-serving word. Yeah. Uh, something that is a, a Sybaritic is something that is very refined and elegant. Tech. People who are Sybarites, like all of us here in this room, are all Sybarites, are people who live for luxury and pleasure. And so if you're into wine and watching this video, you're a sipper, right? Because that's what we do. We live right. to drink wine and be at the table and have a pleasurable life. Correct. Uh, yeah. The wine critic, uh, Josh Reynolds, when I first put this cuvee together, uh, was tasting it. And uh, I asked him, I said, you know, what do you think of the wine? He goes, oh, Doug, it's very sybaritic. And I'm like, what the? <laughs> I can't say the F word on, yeah. on, on, uh, on, 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 on Marquee TV. Uh, but uh, I said, what the fuck does that mean? Is it good or bad? He said, oh no, it's good. And so uh, I looked it up and I just fell absolutely in love with the word. And, and I thought, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's a great fanciful name to call my Sauvignon Blanc. And it's truly delicious. You know, this has got nothing to do with California Sauvignon Blanc that you get from other areas. Forget about it. This is Loire inspired because Doug like me grew up selling wine at retail bringing in really obscure cool little wines most yeah. of the wine, wine world so yeah. this is where this fits in and I think the main difference is you know Sancerre uh that burnt match thing uh, is sort of some sort of more sulfur right oriented. Yeah. and I, I use very very little sulfur so you're not going to get sulfur in this wine uh, at all. You lose, okay. use, uh, so I use, I, I use, I antioxidate using carbon dioxide oh, yeah. and, and leaves. Yeah. Uh, and so you will not get that. And also it is fruitier. I mean, we have a, it just has a sort of a fruitier profile to it, but it's absolutely delicious. We get physiological, physiologically ripe Sauvignon Blanc at alcohol levels at 11, five to 12, perfect. which is perfect. And you know, I just can't see drinking 13 and a half percent alcohol uh, yep. Sauvignon Blanc. It's yep. great with food, really light, really dry, really crisp, clean, elegant. It has grass, some, some grassy aromas, but for the most part, it's just this sort of perfect Sauvignon it's Blanc. It's thirst quenching. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the M5, which <laughs> is cool. Why M5? Because it's got five varietals. Yep, so it's M5, M for marjoram, five grapes, all grown on the estate. Right. Uh, it's primarily Grenache Blanc, right. blended with Marsan, Rousson, Viognier, and Pic Blanc. Okay. 
Uh, we all grow it all organically. Uh, it's uh, we use the we use the entire uh, block of grapes that I planted, thinking I planted them in the exact right proportions. Right. But we always have a little bit of Viognier &E left over or Roussel left over that we bottle uh, mainly for our wine club. It is a it truly uh, it bats above its its uh, level because yeah. it delivers it's a huge deliverable. Uh, I it, it has some complex some flavors. We do do some barrel fermentation. We do some malolactic, but it's just a, a totally satisfying wine. I I think the story I didn't tell you last night was. There's always that guy in every town, and in our town, it's, yeah. it's a doctor, I'm not going to say yeah. his name, yeah. and he has the biggest wine collection, and he goes to almost every wine club, and he's, he's the guy. Pass his car, and, all that yeah. stuff. And yeah, we, yeah, yeah. So we uh, were at a dinner, and I donated this wine to a, a dinner uh, for a charity event. There's about 100 people there, and I see him get up, and all of a sudden he starts walking towards me. I'm like, the doctor is walking towards me. Puts his hand on my shoulder, and he goes, Doug. I want to tell you that's the best Chardonnay I've ever had. <laughs> and I said, "Thanks, it's not Chardonnay." Chardonnay. <laughs> and this is this is a, basically a Chardonnay of the Pap inspired well, white yeah, wine. Exactly, yeah, it's yeah. it's truly delicious. It's yeah. not heavy. It's not cloying like a lot of them. Exactly. They're not blanc, really, with, and pick cool, which is that has that salinity to it. Yeah. Uh, delicious wine. We probably err on holding it back and then letting it go forward okay. because those, you're right, those rivals can get very overwrought. Absolutely. Okay, let's go move on to the, I don't have my glasses on, M5, M5 red. red. So M5 Red, same deal, M for Marjoram, five grapes, Grenache, Syrah, Morved, Cunoise, and Senso. Right. And this is the flagship wine that I've been making from the very first day I started making wine. This is the wine I set out to make. Uh, Chef Nick Pop used to be much more of a Grenache based wine. Correct. This is a Grenache based wine. It is totally satisfying and delicious. And once you buy a bottle, you'll keep buying bottles for the rest of your life. It's savory. That's it's what I like about it. Extremely savory. And it's not, you get a lot of the Chateauneufs or a lot of the Rhone styled, uh, California Rhone styled, and they're very um, effusive in their fruit. Right. They're easily appealing because of the fruit. But this has this broader mouthfeel, spicy. Right. You can almost taste all the layers of the grapes in there, and it really worked well with the lunch that we and had. And the yesterday. biggest compliment I get is someone says, "You know, it's, it has a, it's almost has a structure like Pinot Noir." I'm like, "Absolutely, exactly. Really slow, long, cool fermentation, low extraction. It's it's a total winner." Cool, cool. Now Santa Barbara uh, Syrah. So this is the Santa Barbara Canyon Syrah, which we've never made a Santa Barbara Canyon Syrah, but once we planted our estate vineyard. Uh, we we did a, a promotion. We did a selection. Right. Uh, so the top wine, the stuff that goes in the new barrel, the stuff that's free run, the stuff that's more whole cluster, goes into our state Syrah, and whatever doesn't fit into that uh, that section, we make the Santa Barbara County Syrah and blend it with some of the other Syrah uh, regions we work with, which is Los Alamos and Santa Rita Hills. Okay. Which is a very right. very cold climate. So it's got this beautiful sort of pepperiness to it. Uh, it's also low extraction winemaking, so it has very fine tannins. Uh, it's, it doesn't have anything you would in it, and it's just a, it's a very nice, drinkable, oh, classic Syrah. And you know how well it went with yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, good sweetbreads yesterday. It was just yeah, yeah. stupidly good. It was, it was, it was truly delicious. So there you have it, folks. Really cool wines from Marjoram from Santa Barbara County. I think you're gonna like them. Uh, Tim, for those of you who are unable to make the tasting, you know, you want to sign up for our newsletter if that's how you get to uh, get to uh, find out about all these events thanks for your continued support and we'll talk later cheers